frustrations that everybody else is facing in this industry. This gathering is a call, is an answer to a call of desperation. Just yesterday, we have seen messages from some of our colleagues th threatening to end their lives if they are not paid by this Friday. It only means that the situation is there and it's important that all of us speak out and it's important that all of us express ourselves, whether anonymously or whether through the associations that we are affiliated to. That way, Say, and we have a lot to we can easily present to the to the organizations that you represent as already um, our um, um, secretary general has already said at K, uh, Kenya Union of journalists there have been a series of meetings before and these meetings are happening and all the time that meetings are happening there are promises that are being made the only problem is these promises remain a promise but then they're not implemented and so we stand here to say we have faith in you and the work that you do and we have faith in the industry and we're here to say we will continue to champion for the cause that you do and we will continue to stand in solidarity with you to see that you are paid your dues and when you have problems please reach out please call out don't suffer in silence because that is really the work of the organizations that are represented before you and just to add a bit to that, um, we're finding more and more of the journalists, uh, especially freelance journalists who, who contribute to these mainstream media houses, they're not being paid. So it's also, a, it has a ripple effect. So the the uh, the people who are employed, genuinely employed, are not being paid. So are correspondents. So are freelancers who are suffering. And we've seen this that they have reduced the uh, they have reduced the payment, even for feature stories that were being paid five thousand shillings are going for two thousand five hundred. For a photo that was going for five hundred shillings is going for two hundred and fifty shillings. That is really not even anything it's not dignifying for us and we want to protect this uh this industry we want to protect our our cause we want to protect <clears throat> what we have been practicing as journalists for a long time let it not end because we are seeing such things happening right now in this country yes we understand there are issues that are coming up these economical challenges here and there but that does not mean as a as an organization that you should infringe on the rights of your workers that does not mean that uh, yes you can hide behind covid but for how long can you hide behind behind the covid pandemic for how long things are moving but now it's time for us to stand in solidarity and talk together as one voice let's talk together as one voice and stand together because Today it's me, I'm a freelance journalist, and tomorrow you as a correspondent, you know things, there's a lot of restructuring. And what is happening? When restructuring, or when restructuring happens, most of the journalists who are practicing does, do not stop practicing. They find themselves becoming freelancers. So if we do not start championing for, for, for this cause, then we're going to be at a loss. And I know I'll, we all love journalism. This is what, it's our bread and butter, but we need to go higher. And we're asking, we're calling for all journalists around in Kenya, please, let's champion for this cause. I know there's a hashtag that's already trending. Please do not stop. Let's push it online. Let's push it on our social media, uh, uh, spaces and let's talk about it because at the end of the day like our colleague just mentioned when i saw the the post of one of the guys who said uh by friday i'll commit suicide i felt it because i mean it's really sad that somebody is just thinking of ending his life because he's been frustrated by by his employer and it's not right you as a journalist we need you and i we need to stand up for our rights. I know we've only stood up for the rights of others in the other industries, teachers when they go on strike, doctors when they go on strike, we've gone for to cover their manda manners. But when it comes to us, when it hurts us, I wouldn't like to see anyone losing their life because of that. Because 
they've lacked money and yet the employers they're there having big things they're flying in their choppers they're going everywhere and we're not even exposing them let's stand in solidarity thank you so uh, in this Yes, I, I know like for the case of uh, the SACO, SASRA has already uh, taken action, huh? but now uh, the issue is about that just implementation, because SASRA has actually told them that they must get the funds and uh, pay the SACO members whatever they had put in the SACO. Uh, CMA, we have not uh, had a direct engagement with them, and that's why I said that um, the authorities must now also take action and investigate what went wrong and who made those the mistakes that led the company to where it is. Then even the board, we must also find out from is there a board at uh, the standard uh, group that uh, is uh, doing that oversight of what uh, is happening at the company and if uh, some. Uh, Actions that were done not uh, not uh, in line with uh, the procedures. Then why did those uh, things happen at the stand? That's why you're asking these questions. That CMA must come out because this is not something that has happened today. Is this something that could have uh, been uh, happening there for a number of years uh, and uh, unnoticed or noticed but nobody was taking action? So that's uh, that's our position. So in summary, let us stand in solidarity with our colleagues who are suffering. Because in these hard economic times, if you are not paid for this number of months, even one month alone, then you can feel uh, that pinch. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for turning up and uh, showing a solidarity with our colleagues. Next time, maybe it is in your company, we'll come and we'll support you and we'll express our solidarity to ensure that there is no injustice in any media house in Kenya. Because we had normalized injustice, uh, poor work conditions, and also non-payment of salaries.